I have to say that my favorite character was Humphrey. I mean, Humphrey's pretty awesome. He's a jokester and very lovable character. One of the characters I found very, very interesting and I felt was going to steal the show was Lily. I like Lily. Lily is very shy, but kind of quirky and fun. I really like the bluebirds and how they fall out of the sky. I just think they're so cute. I like Patty and Marcel. They're pretty entertaining. I can't really pick a favorite. They're all pretty great. <laughs> It's very, very challenging in an animated project to create characters that are believable on screen. We're dealing with animated wolves, and we didn't want them to be realistic wolves. We wanted to caricature them. We looked at wolf characteristics, so we want to find that balance of, you know, design and also realism. Is there a way we can do it that seems wolfy but not human and get the same idea across? We want our movie to have its own signature look, something a little bit more graphic and edgy. We'll start out with a group of artists and we'll all develop the character together. And we'll just try to capture this character and their personalities. There are lots of artists all around the world designing our wolves. So we have maybe 60 different looks and styles to pick from. Some people will like to work in color and those jump right in and paint something, but generally pencil sketches. And we would take, oh, we like the eyes of this one, or we like the tail on this one. Oh, and what about the ears on this one? It could just be the face, it could be a gesture, whatever will help tell us more about this character. And then we'd have a composite drawing, uh, taking all of these from the different drawings, and we say, okay, does that capture the personality of our character? For characters, we go through a lot of explorations. And this is Humphrey when he first started out. Here's another version of him. There are a lot of times where it's like Frankensteining the characters together. Like this, we definitely kept his face, but we changed his body. This was the closer to the final version of Humphrey. The eyes are probably the most important part of the character because when you look at anybody, your eyes go right to their eyes and that's how we kind of connect with each other. Some really attractive eyes are Lily's. That is such a touching scene when Garth moves the fur off of Lily's eyes and he sees those beautiful lavender eyes for the first time. Wow. And you see then the importance of eyes in that scene. If you look at wolves, they pretty much all look alike. And so we had to come up with some way how we were going to separate the looks of the different wolves so that our audience could identify with each individual wolf. Wolves don't really have much of a mane, but we added a mane and we used that mane to help show the personality. For instance, Kate has a long mane which shows that she's a girl. We gave Humphrey kind of a rough kind of a look and his mane is just not so kept because we wanted him to be loose and free and happy. And so the mane helped us create that character. Tony and Winston were our pack leaders and so we gave them big, heavy manes like they've been around for a long time. And so we let the length of the mane help determine the age. So that was a departure from the way wolves look, but it also gave us great character design and great individuality among the wolves. After sketching, it will go into a more clean-up design where someone will turn the character, like three-quarter, front on, back, top. After that, we have the gesture and expression poses. And this would be an exploration page on Humphrey's poses and expressions. And we also did the same with Kate. We show action poses, we show all kind of facial expressions, happy, sad, all these kinds of things that will help the CGI artist now take it into the 3D space. CG modeling means computer-generated model. We take the 2D artwork, material like concept art, um, drawings, paintings, we build the three-dimensional model. It's almost like you were building a model out of clay. That's what the CGI modelist does. And so he took all of those pencil drawings, all those color drawings that we did, and he actually formed that character into 3D. Sometimes the 2D doesn't really work in 3D, so we would have to 
you know, create it differently in 3D and try to interpret it a different way while maintaining the integrity, the look, and the feel of the character. And as we started moving them into the CGI world, into the computer, we found out that they were a little bit too angular and, and weren't quite appealing enough. And so we had to soften them and make them look a little bit more like real wolves. And that's what's so neat about the CGI animation. They're round and they're full and they're exciting to look at. And then we hand it over to the texture artists. They put the color detail, the fur, or whatever the character needs. The program is called Shave and Haircut. It actually grows fur right on our model. And the fur, you can grow it long, you can take a comb, you can cut it. You can do all of these things to make it look just like the way you want it to. We were faced with many challenges. How do we make the Omegas look different from the Alphas? So we looked to experiment with colors and different textures so that the two would separate and have distinguishing marks and things of that nature. Humphrey has black and whites and some purples and all these different colors in it. And so that artist kind of creates all of those different colors and all those different values and shades that he'll have on him. So after we have the textures done and we see how the wolf looks, then we go into animation and then it really gets exciting. The, the beauty of animation is people sit in the audience and actually believe that this line a drawing is a real breathing thing, you know, and it comes to life for them. It's just a great world to create from scratch and tell great stories that, you know, can connect to people. And you kind of identify with that person or that character. There's somebody in that feature that, that's kind of like you. I really think that's the appeal of animation, and it is ageless. One difference between a live action movie and an animated movie is that everything in an animated movie has to be created. A lot of uh, animated projects, what they do is they'll take a live action texture and map it onto the geometry so it's super realistic. We didn't want to take that route. We could have shot this movie up in Jasper National Park and not have to create any of that background. But we wanted our movie to have its own signature look. We knew we wanted the wolves to move like real wolves. But when it comes to their faces, we wanted them to look almost like humans. We wanted to be able to look in their face and feel the emotion that they were feeling in their heart. Ha! Ah! Whoa! Uh, um. Then they became real for the audience. Then we know what they're thinking and what they're going through. And we can identify and fall in love with them. From day one on Alpha and Omega, we really wanted to have it be an acting film. We wanted as much animation as possible, but we also wanted to keep it very realistic. We uh, filmed ourselves doing all the acting in the movie, and it was very embarrassing, but because the production was done in India, we wanted to give them as much information as possible. So we would act like wolves, we would howl like wolves. Another thing that really helps the animators come up we videotape the recording sessions so that we can actually see what the actor or actresses go through when they say that line. And that makes it feel like, yeah, it's coming right from that character. We would act out exactly how we want that performance to be. Every subtlety, every nuance, every detail. And that was very, very important to us in terms of making the characters believable. We call it acting smackers. Funny name, I know, but, but it's really a great technique. <laughs> The actors inspire us during the filmmaking process to bring the characters to life. We record the voice first, and then we animate to the voice. With the subtleties and details of the performance, it becomes believable that this character can love, this character can hate, this character can feel emotions. I love you. There's a lot more fine-tuning and refining you can do in animation. We'll do a first pass, and once it gets in the editorial, we'll see how it's playing. Story elements might pop up. We might find funnier gags, and then we'll go back into the booth, and we'll present these to our actors so that we can ensure that we're going to bring out the best quality story we can. I'm Joe Campana. I was the editor on Alpha and Omega, and I'm going to walk you through some of the steps of the process as they hit the editorial department. This is where we've assembled the storyboards against the dialogue in here. It's called the animatic part of the process. Wait, 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 wait! <laughs> oh, hey there. <laughs> Once that's completed, this is the blocking pad. 
from the layout or blocking department before it goes to animation. Well, look who's having fun. You can see they have no hair, the backgrounds aren't colored, the textures aren't put on yet. Wait, 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 wait! There's a whole group of artists, they're called rigging artists, and they go in and they create a skeleton inside the body. So we could move the tail, we could move the eyebrow, we could move the cheek, we could move just a little bit of the chin. We could do anything we wanted to do because they've created this skeleton inside the body to make it move. We'll probably go through a few takes on this to make sure all the acting is correct and in sync and the movements are what the directors want. And once that's approved, we get the color pass in, which has all the lighting textures, the fur, hair, other items in it. You get very used to watching storyboards and blocking for a long, long time because animation takes a while to come in. And it's really a surprise as things progress. They really capture what the characters are. It starts really becoming something special. You wolves! You are funny! <laughs> the editing department is where all the fun happens. The sound is done, the music is laid in, everything comes in here. This is the last place it goes before you pretty much see it in the theaters. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, he's a goner for sure. It took us over about three and a half years to, to bring Alpha and Omega to the screen. We worked on the script for about two years. We were in pre-production designing all of our characters for at least another eight, nine months. We were in production then for almost two years on it, and our final post-production was about three months. So it was a crew of about 600 people, and we have all of their names on the credits. They deserve it. Animation, for me, it's like a moving Picasso, you know, it's, it's an art form, and we've given this line a drawing, the ability to think and, and move and to interact, especially if you can impact someone's life with it, it's, it's just an amazing tool. I'm still a big kid at, at heart, and there's just something magical about watching these other worlds and these characters that aren't real, you know, going on these adventures, and it's really a great world to be in and, and tell great stories that, you know, can connect to people. I can remember the first time that I ran it all the way through with all the color, with the music, with the sound effects, and I watched it and I thought, wow, we did good.